Evil flourishes when good men do nothing. As we begin to reopen the conversation about Roe versus Wade, it bears mentioning that there's far too many individuals out there who are woefully unequipped with the facts around Roe v. Wade, as it were. And here on this page, here on these channels, what we do is we actually speak truth and we are not governed solely by our emotions. So Roe versus Wade is the legislation that more or less made abortion the law of the land. And it was a decision that came at a time in America that was very different from what we see today. But it's important to understand the facts around Roe versus Wade so we can understand how individuals on the left side of the aisle particularly are obfuscating the true nature of what Roe versus Wade was and what it was intended to do. Now, the figurehead behind Roe versus Wade was a woman by the name of Norma McCorvey. Norma McCorvey actually was an individual who was weaponized, more or less, and became a lightning rod of sorts because of the trials and tribulations that she went through. And many individuals on the left chose to cling to Norma McCorvey's story as rationale or basis for establishing Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. What's very interesting, though, is when you look at what happened to Norma McCorvey later on in her life, she actually became a staunch advocate of life of the unborn children in the world. And what's really funny is that people fail to realize that because individuals on the left, they cling to a particular notion or overarching concept that allows them to feel good or justified in their outrage without even understanding that the person who was responsible for this bill even becoming the law of the land or this law in the first place was someone who came out later in life, who was baptized, who came out very much against the abortion movement. But let's analyze how all these different factors really mesh together. Abortion is a topic that many people feel very strongly about. And up until recently, many individuals on the left said, oh, if you aren't a woman, you're not allowed to have an opinion on it. But here we are now in a world where the left says that men can be women. So you start to see how even the left's own concepts begin to cannibalize themselves over time, the longer you allow their insanity to continue. I'm going to tell you about something that, for me, has always boggled my mind. Many individuals out there, I saw Elizabeth Warren out there on the steps of the Supreme Court earlier today, more or less almost having an aneurysm because of how upset she was at the prospect of Roe v. Wade being stricken, stricken down. And she was talking about how, oh, rich people, it's not an issue for them. And it's not about a class difference in this case. We're talking about the sanctity of life. What does it say about your own culture when your culture places such a high premium on the ability to access an abortion? What I found very revealing about many individuals who are out there in support of abortion and who have been for the last several decades is they all seem to have a certain thing in common. And that thing seems to be, unfortunately, it's many individuals out there who, for one reason or another, have chosen to exploit abortion the way many individuals, historically even, have exploited abortion. I will say this before I get started talking about this topic more, though, that black women, according to the CDC's own data, are almost four times more likely to get an abortion than white women. So again, you're seeing a conflagration of two different topics right now. Because on one side, the left will say Black Lives Matter. But when you have such a disparate number of individuals who are in the black community who are doing abortions, that is, dis dis that is poorly affecting black life. But people don't fail to put those two connections together. Now think about this. Abortions are primarily sought out because of convenience. That is a fact you can look up for yourself. The CDC, the uh, Guttmacher Institute, and many other organizations have compiled data over many years showing that the vast majority of individuals do pursue abortions for convenience. And what's really interesting is you'll see many politicians on the left come out of the woodwork now and talk about these one-off or cherry-picked incidents like, oh, what about the case of if an individual is forcibly raped? Or what if there is incest or so on and so forth? And do you know that as far as those cases are concerned, the 90% of abortions, at the very least, are sought out because of convenience. Those cases where the life of the mother is threatened or where there's a severe birth defect, those account for statistically insignificant numbers of the total number of abortions that take place. 
And think about how negatively this impacts minority communities. If you're familiar with Margaret Sanger, you know that Margaret Sanger was a known eugenicist who has gone on record in the past, who one, gave speeches at KKK events, and another, at likened individuals in the impoverished communities as if they were human weeds needed to be exterminated. These are all things that kind of become common to individuals on the left. It's that devaluing of human life. What I find very disconcerting is that so many individuals on the left will go along with it even when it goes at cross purposes with what they purport to support in the first place. People have said, my body, my choice, my body, my choice, my body, my choice. For the last two, not even two years, for the last two decades even, as far as I can remember, we've heard that be a common refrain for individuals on the left. What's very funny is now we're starting to see a shift from individuals on the left who now want to claim bodily autonomy. Where was this energy just a few weeks ago before the mandates were lifted and you had people who were more or less being coerced either by their corporation, by their employer or what have you into submitting to a medical injection? Why would that be the case? Why is it that now you claim to support bodily autonomy, but before that didn't apply? And the answer really is simple. It's all about hypocrisy in the here and now. It's no secret that the left has come under fire time and time again for what they've done to the country over the past several months. We've seen inflation go to levels we haven't seen since the early 80s, if not ever. You're seeing the cost of basic goods continue to soar. You're seeing supply chain constraints. We're seeing all these issues hitting the left, and they have no one else to blame because they are the ones who are in charge right now. But what's very interesting about this moment in time now is this provides them with the energy that a lot of people on their base needed to have. Because a lot of the issues that we've been dealing with are indefensible. I don't care if Trevor Noah goes up there to the White House Correspondents' Dinner and cracks a joke about Biden making prices rise and then Biden sits there and laughs and claps his hands laughing at the struggle of everyday Americans. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is the fact that people on the left needed something to coalesce around. And they knew that. And the real issue that people should have is why this information about the Supreme Court voting to overturn Roe v. Wade was even leaked in the first place. There's so much political activism that has pervaded every aspect of life these days that we're at a point in time now where individuals will see information like that as politically expedient. Many individuals on the left have had nothing to rally around for quite some time. But guess what? Now they think they do. Because a bad actor somewhere in government, somewhere, chose to take information that was supposed to remain private to the Supreme Court and leaked it out in order to elicit a reaction. Because this is where the left specializes. They specialize in spontaneous demonstrations. Ask yourself this. There's so many protests that have popped up over the last 24 hours why, where are these people coming from? Where were they when we were screaming my body, my choice justifiably so for the last several months? They knew how hypocritical they were, but this to them was one of their sacred cows. The right to have an abortion has been one that many on the left have championed, even though if you look back in the past, individuals, including Joe Biden himself, were against Roe v. Wade as early as just a few decades ago. So it just goes to show you how they will shift whatever Overton window they want in order to present themselves in the best possible light. But I find something else very disconcerting. The fact that you have individuals out there right now in the streets who are protesting and who are threatening some sort of intimidation towards the individuals on the Supreme Court who are tasked with taking the Roe versus Wade a situation under advisement yet again. This is a tactic that many on the left use consistently. They have established their own playbook now. We remember back during the George Floyd trial where Derek Chauvin was standing trial, I should say. We remember that there were so many activists who were out there threatening to riot and loot and threatening to dox the individuals who were in the jury and so on and so forth. And this is a tactic of the left that they really seem to enjoy, and that tactic is mob rule. Now, when you have mob rule, you're not able to really carry out your duties appropriately. 
But mob rule does not allow you to think clearly. The left knows how powerful intimidation can be. And they know that because they have more or less been given carte blanche, more so in some areas of the country than others, they feel as if they have the right to go and intimidate people who are simply trying to do their jobs or interpret the law. And when you have a base of people who operate that way, you cannot have any semblance of impartiality. Because if there's one thing the left is very good at is they are remarkably consistent. They will find every single in piece of information about you. We've seen them do this with people like Taylor Lorenz doxing the person behind the libs of TikTok. They will find information, anything about you, and they will use that to hurt you just for doing what you want. This is still a free country. You can do what you want to do. You can interpret the law as you choose. Actually, no, you can't. You should interpret the law as it is written. And because people have allowed their feelings to be more important to them than the actual facts or than basic common sense and logic, that has gone the way of the dodo. But now we've got people who will do everything in their power to threaten violence unless they get the result that they want. The left knows exactly what they're doing. If you want to talk about violence, you know what is violent? Is dilation and curettage, but we're not going to get into that today. But just know that the tactics and methods behind abortion itself shouldn't make anyone's skin crawl if you have an ounce of morality in you. There are videos that surfaced where the unfortunately aborted young babies were found by pro-life activists. And many of you, I'm sure, saw those pictures over the past several weeks. These are humans, human beings. In many cases, like I mentioned before, because black women get more abortions than white women, then guess what? There's a lot more black babies who have been killed over the past several decades because of Roe v. Wade. So you can't sit there and say, black lives matter, black lives matter, and then claim you want to have abortion rights because to you abortion is health care. When you know that that is going to disproportionately affect minorities that you claim to care about, that you'll go out in the streets and pump your fist in the air a few times and say black lives matter, but you don't care about them. Why? Because it's not politically expedient. The bullying has to stop, though. What's funny is whenever something like this actually happens, you never see barricades being erected in major cities whenever there's something that is going to anger the right. And many things have angered the right. Just think about the many school board meetings and drag queen story hour, all these different things that the left knows should incense justifiably individuals on the right. But they don't have to board up their buildings. They don't have to put up barricades because that's not how a civilized, normal human being, an adult, acts. But because from such a young age, the left has massaged this notion that you can do whatever you want. You are special. You are this. You are that. You've got a bunch of overgrown children who have been allowed to throw tantrums for so long that they feel as if they have the ability to go out and exact violent revenge on anyone who disagrees with them. That's not how humans act in a functioning society. But it is how humans act when society is in decline. And it's been declining for a long time here in America and around the world. And these are the issues we should be addressing. It's less about, oh, well, what about this case? What about incest or rape? Like I told you before, most abortions, over 90% of them, are done for the sake of convenience. Because, oh, it's I wasn't ready to have a child. Well, then why were you engaged in unscrupulous or unprotected behavior in the first place? Not a unilateral blanket, because there are one off the anomalies here and there, but why would you take that risk without being willing to accept the risk if something took place? People say they're not financially ready. Well, you know what? Maybe if the left wasn't so doggedly in pursuit of this, oh, you don't need a man narrative they've been doing for a while now, you start to understand how all these different pieces fit together. Think about this. The left has been championing the welfare state for several decades now. And these events kind of go hand in hand, even with Roe v. Wade. As I mentioned about the black community where black women are four times more likely almost to get an abortion than white women. Think about this. Because the welfare state allowed individuals in minority communities and otherwise to no longer seek to have that nuclear family traditional unit. And they instead married the government. Then the government had them right then and there. The man was allowed to leave the home, shirk responsibilities for the most part, and sometimes it was more financially beneficial 
for the men to leave so the women could actually take government money forever. So you have that working against you. You've got this whole entitlement aspect where, oh, I should be able to do whatever I want and have no consequences. And I'm sorry, that's a fantasy. That's a fairy tale. But because now we've had the left talking about, oh, we want to give universal basic, basic income. They want to push you farther and farther away from the concept that can save us from all this other craziness. And that concept is personal responsibility. Actions have consequences. It's not just a pithy saying you can say when you want to. That's just a fact. But because the left does not want you to have to realize consequences for your actions, then they give you carte blanche to engage in whatever actions you want to with zero accountability. It all ties itself together at the end of the day. And as we look at things like Roe versus Wade, obviously this is more likely going to be stricken down. And when it is, guess what? It goes back to the states. And that's what it should be. It should be a state's issue. The problem with government as a whole is government has become so bloated that you don't have the ability to allow the states to do what they were intended to do. If you want to go to California and have an abortion or slice you know what off of your body and modify yourself and whatnot, go ahead, do it. But the federal government should never be in the position where they are allowed to weigh in on these issues and make something the law of the land. That was never the intent of the founding fathers was to have a large government. Part of what we wanted to do with the reason that people left from England came over here was because the government had too much overreach, too much oversight. That's something that people fail to remember anymore. The government is not supposed to be your daddy, your baby daddy, not supposed to be your protector. The government is supposed to just exist in as small quantities as possible to maintain society. But now Roe v. Wade is a prime example of people looking at the government as if the government is the end-all be-all for all of their issues, all of their problems, all their concerns. It's not supposed to be. The only place that we should be able to look to for guidance at all times for protection is Jesus Christ. But as society drifts further and further away from him, you see this, I'll be, I, I'd argue, demonic behavior begin to manifest. There is no good reason for any normal functioning adult to run out into the streets in Washington, D.C. in the middle of the night and begin screaming at the sky, as I've seen videos of most recently. There is no good reason for that, especially when the intent of Roe v. Wade being struck down in the first place is to hopefully preserve the lives of hundreds of thousands of unborn children every year here in America. The only reason someone would go out of their way to act that way is if there's an external manifestation of the evil that's truly inside. There should be no joy that comes from abortion in general. There should be no desire to normalize it. We look back with disgust at the ancient civilizations who would sacrifice their own children and throw them into volcanoes or stab them with daggers on Aztec uh, temples. We look back at that and say, how were these people so barbaric? So you have to think, what will people say about us in the future, years from now, if we simply allow the left to continue to champion this most depraved sacrament to them, that being abortion in general? People will look back, rightfully so, and say, who were these people? They sat by and murdered tens of millions of their own unborn children? But then they claim to care about Black Lives Matter in the same breath. They claim to care about other individuals, other parts of the world. They claim to want to help the defenseless. These are all things that have become sacrosanct to the Democrat Party platform. Oh, we're the party for the little guy. We want to look out for the people who are uh, underserved or impoverished. Really? I can think of no one more underserved, more helpless, and more precious than unborn children. There's so many people out there who want to have children, and they can't have children naturally. And others will look at a fully functioning human being growing inside of a woman's womb and say it's not a human. That's something that we have to come to terms with. And we can no longer afford to beat around the bush on these issues. 
Yes, it means you'll be attacked or disowned by people, but you know what? That's worth it. If you're able to save, as the left likes to say, if it'll save one life, how many lives would this save? Think about that. There are thousands and thousands of abortions that take place every day. And until we start treating those helpless, defenseless, unborn children as if they deserve the right to live and to breathe oxygen and to grow up in this world, we've got work to do. I want you to think about that tonight. So many issues, so many topics that can be brought to the fore and quickly swept away. We cannot allow this moment to pass without disseminating new information and showing that we can think critically and logically about the world around us and do so without external interference from those on the left side of the aisle, no matter what tactics they use to try to bully or force their way into power or to re retain that power after they've already gotten it. Let's pray. God, we, we ask you, we ask you to manifest yourself in this world. We ask you to eradicate these evil forces who would prey on the most vulnerable, on precious gifts that you give us on this world, that being children, the ability to even have children. We ask you to touch the hearts of the individuals out there who would work tirelessly to allow abortion to continue. We ask you to convict them and for them to realize the error of their ways and realize the blessing that comes when you do give us children. And we ask you also to give us the strength to speak boldly, no matter what the fallout may be, and to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I told you tonight was going to be a little bit of a longer video, but I'm not, I'm not sorry about that. If there's any topic we should be talking about in depth, and for long periods of time, it should be this one. I encourage you to share this video with someone who needs to hear a different perspective. Because what you're not going to find here, you're not going to find me screaming at the sky or going out and engaging in violent, wild protests. That is the comportment of subhuman entities, subhuman creatures. Here, we use our brains. Think about the world differently. And there's people out there who need to do the same. So thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope and pray that Roe v. Wade is overturned and returned back to the states for a state's rights issue. I do hope that you took something away from this video you didn't know before. I do my best to give you information that you need to know and help you pass it on. So you know how it is. I'm Damani Felder. You can find me on Facebook. Find me on Twitter. Find me on TikTok. Find me on Instagram. Find me on YouTube. Find me on Rumble. Find me on Gab. Find me on Gitter. The list goes on and on. I'm also on Telegram as well. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know where you're watching from. Just know that I will still be here working tirelessly to protect the unborn as we all should. Love you all. I appreciate you all. And I will catch you in the next one.